Lord Melbourne and I spoke until near 10 p.m. I had a very comfortable conversation with him. We agree on many things. What my role is, what his shall be, and most paramount of all, the non-existent role that Sir John Conroy and Mama shall play. Oh, Sir John, I worry about little Drina if she will not let you help her. I am worried too. Have you seen with whom Her Majesty's been talking with today? Hanging on the words of the PM in every way. It could be pure naivete or simply fascination. Or it could be the starting of a criminal conversation. A criminal conversation? No, you cannot mean. Neither a married and one is a widower. He is her minister, she is his queen. A widower who's using her as sad means to an end. But our precious pure Her Majesty is helpless to defend against the pomp and the indecency that's coming with such frequency. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps we need a regency. A regency? Yes, oh, Convoy, I knew it's a child is queen, but she's too young to do it. Allow me to say you seem passionate, and together I know we can fashion it. We'll convince all the papers and parliament to the crown passage to me, oh, I mean onto you. And she'll learn to behave, and England will be saved. Oh, Sir John, what would we do without you? I dare say I do not know. Did you hear just how Her Majesty's been spending all her time? Letting Melbourne rule her world and keeping her in line. A man of means is dangerous and lusting and carnivorous. What happens when the Queen can't see her own PM is traitorous? <laughs> this session of Parliament will now come to order. Members of Parliament, Knights of the Garter, there now is a matter we must put in order. A child is ruling a nation of men, and we cannot let Mandis rule us again. Madness of kings is a matter of blood. Born of the sires, we put out to stud. Easily swayed and more easily played. Alliance is tarnished and enemies made. Britain shall not be outrun by inferiors. This is the nation of Magnum Superior. Shall we all agree? It's rather clear to me. Should we not be trying for a regency? The absolute lecture. And can the child really be so young and foolish? I hear they share a room. I hear they share a bed. She wears his coat of arms. He wears her crown upon his head. Oh, the, the impudence, impudence of influence and open lechery. Perhaps indeed we really need a regency. I am humble, gentlemen, that you are coming around to my way of thinking. Have you seen just what the papers have to say of us today? Nothing good, it never is, but soon it goes away. They say I'm fat and you are old and claim that we are far too bold. What if? What if? They're trying for a regency. Regency? They come for my minister, prime and important, and claim it is I who am lacking deportment. But let all the haughty and totty men know that a word against you would now make them my foe. I shan't be harassed or harangued in my land, for though I am young and I am not a man, I'll no longer be bullied or broken or beat. So tell all the jackals who come to my seat that this is below human decency and beneath all the standards of pedigree. They'll see what comes from trying for a regency. I want you to look into this, Lord M. All of this business reeks of Sir John Conroy. Yes, ma'am. At once, ma'am. Back goes Mrs. Melbourne with the PM at her side. Synchronized in every word and every step and stride. Are they speaking of their meetings or clandestine rendezvous? It makes you wonder too, what are the things they do? And all they ever might when they are traipsing through the night. And if we should be calling for a... Sir John Conroy. Oh, Prime Minister. A word, if you please. Oh, as much as I would love to. Sit down. Allow me a moment and one word of reason. What you are suggesting is no less than treason. You cannot think that this lad would be better with one German queen and an Irish usurper. She is your queen, sir, and I am her minister. Here to suss out all the dark and the sinister. You have topped my list. 
so tell me what I've missed. You cannot be such an insufferable bore to truly be out here and arguing for. Can it be really that you are so willing to fight and to try and to live and to die for a regency? A regency? Whatever would have made you think I was up to something so nefarious, Lord Melbourne? I cannot say, but I would suggest that it is in your best interest to make certain I never have cause to think it again. But of course, my dear Prime Minister. I've seen him reaching for her hand. I've seen her laughing at his jests. I've seen her starry eyes. I've seen him staring at her breast. Oh, oh she's, she's far too young, young to see. see. Past the depths of villainy. Perhaps, perhaps, maybe. It seems like it to me. It wasn't rather bright to have a bay to bear the light. Perhaps, indeed, we really need a regency. The Prime Minister is here for you, Mum. Yes, of course. Do let him in. Your Majesty. They are not very flattering to us in the papers, Lord M. Is that right, ma'am? They always do draw me so round in these horrible caricatures. And you are not so ugly, don't you think? No. I should like to think I'm not so ugly indeed. Well, as you say, such humour, so it may be called, is the placator of rebellion. And now, shall we discuss the arrival of the Russian Tsarevich, then? His Imperial Highness is scheduled to arrive at... Your um... Majesty, I fear there is perhaps something a bit more pressing at hand I wish to discuss. My, I have never seen you so grave. Is all well, Lord M? There was a vote in Parliament today, ma'am. The subject of which being... A vote of no confidence. A vote of no... My government has fallen, ma'am. And it is with great regret I come to tell you today that I must resign. This is not amusing, Lord M. I speak only truth, ma'am. And pray tell, how have you lost the confidence of Britain's ministers? It seems to be the belief of Parliament that I hold too great an influence over you. You do hold influence over me, but as for it being too great, I cannot agree. Shall they wish me to rule with no advisers and no guidance? They should wish you to rule with Tory guidance, ma'am. This Whig Prime Minister will not do for them any longer. Who are they touting as your successor, then? Sir Robert Peel. A good man. A head for business... And a Peel is unpleasant and dull, and is not as you are in the slightest. I believe, ma'am, that is his parliamentary appeal. You do not have to. Ma'am? If I refuse to form a government under him, you will be unable to resign, and you can stay here with me, keeping things as they are for the good Your of the Your Majesty, people. my... Upper... I cannot do this without you, Lord M. I am certain. That your majesty will not deem me too presuming if I express my fear that this decision is painful to your majesty. But you will meet this crisis with that firmness which belongs to your character. And with that rectitude and sincerity which will carry you through all difficulties. You are always going to have to do it without me, ma'am. Eventually. Eventually does not mean now. I'm afraid it does, ma'am. My time, as it were, has run out. No, you cannot go. How am I supposed to rule without you? Please, you cannot leave How am I to do this on my own? You cannot go I understand the world moves fast And we must move Not 
asking for forever I'm just asking for today Please think of all the people who still need you Who cares of all the villains who do not It's not about the party or the parliament It's the people who should be your first thought I understand that time moves fast And we must move as well But if you cannot see And if you cannot asking for today I am young and I'm afraid with enemies on all sides don't leave me to the masses and the Tories and my mother I can't face them alone I have to to ridicule me for my tears. Do you think of me as so hard-hearted, Bertie, that you did not dream I could cry? Of course not. She lost so much, so soon. It's not as if he died, Beatrice. But he left her, just like everyone else. Her first confidant, her first friend, her first loss. It is not an easy thing to read about. Are you to wipe it away, then? This grief of hers. I... I do not know. If I were to not erase all her grief, her inordinate attachment, well... Well, you would have a woman. A woman with humanity. That's not so hard to stomach now, is it? Bertie, you must know I have to keep going. This is not a war I'm prepared to lose. That's all right. Perhaps there's a few battles I can win along the way. Perhaps a few words that can remain hers. <laughs> yes, perhaps. The 7th of May, 1839. This state of agony and grief are best imagined than described. Not a single soul. 